Hi everyone, welcome back to the uh, Jansen Art Studio. I'm David Jansen. I'm going to show you another uh, quick composition today, which we'll do with the Heritage uh, Multimedia. Uh, the six color set is what we'll use today. And all of the links and everything that I do from quick composition books and brushes and videos, everything I use, look down into the description down below. And that will show you, we'll have the links over to Amazon. You can buy them on Amazon, buy them over on our store. And if Amazon ever runs out, you can get them on our store and vice versa and stuff like that. Okay, let's get into some of the painting. So what I have here, uh, what I have here is just the... Uh, um, uh, board regular MDF which I like to use this MDF boards for quick compositions they're they're really inexpensive I uh, took some uh, Hansa yellow and uh, some black and just a little bit of white just a little bit of white and made a nice grayed yellow you could actually warm this uh, just a, a touch more with a little bit of your uh, a naphtha red light which is right from your your 12 color sets now I put it all I put all my colors out right in these little containers I have other videos you can look to all the other videos to see exactly what I what I do and that's how I start it. So I'm going to start here. I'm going to make a, a brown. And a beautiful brown is really uh, two parts red, one part black, and just a little bit of yellow. And you'll get a uh, a nice kind of a brownish color, which is what I want to have, a little more black here. And um, I'm going to add just a touch of extender medium, this which comes in like our kits and stuff. It's a propylene glycol-based medium, non-toxic. It's wonderful. And that will uh, uh, just make it a little looser here so I can do a little sketching with it here. Okay, so let's come in and let me just show you how we're going to do a, a quick comp i do quick compositions all different kinds of ways sometimes I, i'll pre-sketch out something like there comes a, a stem unit that's going to come out to the flowers and this particular flower i may come out with right in here onto this side here now a lot of times when I when I do this, uh, I'm doing it on a dry background. You normally see me paint into a wet background, but today I'll throw it into a dry background. And you know, those of you that are learning, it helps you to be able to draw a pattern or do a sketch like this. And uh, or if you have a pattern, you can transfer a pattern, and I'll, I'll show you. You can you know build on it a little bit. So uh, sometimes it helps to work on a dry background where you can build a pattern. And let's just uh, let's talk about you know putting on uh, a couple of uh, little daisies or little uh, blossom buds out here like this maybe out maybe one comes down here like this one comes here and then we'll push the rose in right on top of that one right there maybe now I draw ovals to turn their flower and then I so here this one will turn down this one will turn this way oval turns it circle makes it go flat when I first started painting flowers I did everything as circle circle circles and it always flat here on my rose it's going to follow the same thing I'll oval it up a bit and that'll turn it now what really makes a rose more than anything else is its center so and I divide the rose back up into three circles which I've showed you on all kinds of other videos there and uh, I'll come in and I'll put a nice dark center in here just so you can visualize that. That that center is what really makes that rose. And it also sets the gaze of the rose. So here the rose is going to go this way because my center is that way. If I turn that center, wherever I turn that center, that's the way you, that rose is looking. So if I want to make it look down like that, that's where I put the center here. And then I want to make sure that I do definitely see the bottom of the bowl right before you get to the reaching, what I call the reaching petals out here. Now, you can come out here and you can sketch in, if you had, you can sketch in petals that, that come out different lengths and everything. And basically, we want to keep this rose kind of an oval shape there or something like that. And I'm going to want some edges of this rose to kind of die down a bit or, or to fade off. So I might just soften that sketch on that side here these little daisies and stuff they again their center their gaze is going to go here so that will um let me grab just a touch more black here just well, let's try to touch it there dave so we'll get some of that in and uh, we'll drop that center in there now if i put the the longer petals here into the back the the flowers reaching out so if I want a flower to to really reach out let's say we oval it like this and and I have this stem coming up here if I want a flower to really reach like it really wants to go this direction here I drop the center down not into the center I drop it down here and I put the longer petals of the flower out like this and then shorter petals to the front and the flower reaches out that way 
if I want to flower to it. Same type of thing here. If, uh, if I put the, the larger petals out here, that I can make a flower droop down. So if I had a, an oval like this, and, and this time I put shorter petals into the back, longer petals into the front, the flower will droop down like a cornflower or something like that. It'll droop down. So I want this one to to reach out and come back out this way. So I'll, I'll drop that center there. And these will just put a little center there, maybe a little center here. And we'll just kind of play with them as by ear as we get going. Now, one of the things I like to get right away into it is uh, a nice green. And we have a lot of yellow into our a nice real toned grayed yellow really into our background so i'm going to follow that same type of thing here i'm going to take hansa yellow and a little bit of black these make your olive greens that we're so used to seeing uh this is how paint companies make it we make a nice olive green i can add a little bit of my thalo blue which is very powerful up here which will make more of your blue greens which i want to stay away from right now i want to maybe a little let's put a little in there but I want to get more of my olive green, which is black and Hansa yellow here. Just Hansa yellow with a little bit of black. Maybe just a touch of that blue. Now, if I want that to tone down, just grab some of your red. And see how that grays that down. And any of that red's going to go. And look at this beautiful, real kind of brownish green you get that's going to go right with your, right with your composition as you have it now. This beautiful green, rich green that goes right with that composition because it's really made with the same colors. It's it's, And that's the beauty of doing limited palette painting. You can get a lot of harmony to all of your paintings quite quickly because the, the colors that you do, they're just different combinations of the same colors. And so you get a lot of harmony and you don't get these, you don't get... Um, you know, like, oh, this green, just where does that come from? Where does that go with? You don't get any of that kind of stuff going on. Now, I'm going to keep this. You have a choice as an artist is you can come in and you can paint more defined uh, shapes. Like I can come out through here like this, for example, and I can say, okay, I'm going to bring a stem out, maybe bring a stem out and let's just turn a leaf down like this, maybe pull out. I imagine the center and pull out like that. And I can, uh, and sometimes I'll come back in and just state the center and pull out like that. And so I can pull a, a more defined leaf shape. And sometimes I leave it very casual out like this. And lately, you know, in, in my artistic journey, as I've painted for all these years and painted so many styles in so many different countries and, and uh, traveled and taught and everything, I... I have liked combining the two. I like uh, taking a decorative painting and an artistic, uh, impressionistic look, and I like combining the two and putting them together. I even use what we call negative painting techniques from porcelain painting and, and bring edges of flowers out and stuff like that. So I like to uh, paint what I think my painting needs. And, and so my job is to just show you some of the techniques that I've discovered over the years and learned over the years and and you can decide how you want to do it in your painting so I may put some of that down let's just drop that little stem down here I like uh, I really like some of the the uh, paintings that Catherine Klein did and 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 setting up flowers and 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 leaves and you know and there's so so many painters that I've studied over the over the years, Paul DeLong, pray beautiful, beautiful turn of the century. Um, really, he uh, did a lot of botanical paintings and and uh, shape studies and everything. But I love some of the, his little leaves, and of course, I take those and I soften them out now. So I'm just going to just lightly just set up a few shapes. I might come in and put a little more of a slide this up to a lighter a little blue green. That's a cooler green right there you can see it's a the blue helps cool that down and that that looks kind of nice when you put that up against the warm color sometimes and I'll push just a little bit of that green in and I'll push a little bit of that green into the painting itself into my casual areas and into my more defined areas here okay so I'm in none of this I I don't approach this like this is any done this is just movement and if you can see I always kind of jitter my brush around and and just kind of moving this around and this is what I really like is to get 
some of this this real quick casual movement and you know i have a tendency being a left brain painter i have a tendency to to make it uh you know all the same so i like to i like to break that tendency and in other words leave the same amount of space all the way around and maybe take it to the side and almost one side of this might even come off the painting or or come off the side up there like that and let's just add a little i like that little splash of yellow green in there that's kind of pretty and sometimes I paint so quick I get little color things happen and I kind of like it and I'll just move with it. So we have that. Now we have to kind of decide we have, um, we want to paint a, uh, some maybe some white daisies and kind of a yellowish rose. So let's get some more of our yellow off. But here, but let's, uh, when you're when you're going to do this, so it goes with everything, let's drop our yellow right in here. So it's going to pick up some of the colors of the other ones that we have here because we're painting for harmony let's drop some white right into here now you have a green and you have a a, a red those are complements those make beautiful gray colors okay so my green is coming from my Hansa yellow and a little bit just a little bit of my black and I can toss that right into my red which is coming from my Naplo red light because they're complements and I can get beautiful versions of grays for, and I can slide it over here towards a slightly green. I can slide it over here slightly towards the reds and I can get beautiful gray colors here that I can use to make some beautiful, uh, like little daisy shapes here, longer in the back, shorter out to the front here like this push those colors in and out like that and I'll get a beautiful base for some of my daisies here. Let's push this one in here. Let's uh, add just a bit extender so my color moves a bit more here and let's add some soft out here like that. Just a nice little soft color. So this one we want to push like this as well. Push some color into it there. And I, you can see I, I just I paint it real quick in and out there. Um, I might If I want to lighten it up, you might want to warm it, change it, add a little more uh, yellow or something to it here. Let's just push a little front light color. You have to determine if I stroke down like this, I'll make the, the pedal look like it's going up. If I pull with the light pedal out here to the edge, then I make it look like it's falling down. So I can make it look like it's falling down by adding just a little movement out like that. So I control this this uh, particular daisy here, how it's going to uh, how it's going to look. And I'm just going to leave it about like that for right now while I go take some of my yellows, maybe a little bit of red into it. This is a nice soft yellow up here. Nice soft yellow. A little white will help soften that out as well. Just a real soft casual yellow color. We'll base in the front of the rose. We'll let this soften out as it goes back. A yellow going to a white rose would be kind of pretty. And I'm just gonna follow around that center there and let's just push some of this color together. So the Heritage Acrylics here, because I haven't mixed out with some extender, will stay wet for quite a long time here into our painting today. Okay. So let's, um, and let's get some nice cool red violet. That's also in the 10 color set, or excuse me, the six color set. Take some red violet and some red. Nap the red light in there. And let's add a bit of red into that flower. So we'll have a red and yellow flower. I'm just going to push it into the center here and pull it down. Now this is a nice, that red violet makes it cool. So I'm going to keep that to the cool side, the bottom side of my rose here. I don't want to get out into the sunshine too much because it's cool color. So I want to keep it out here in and around the base. I can use this just like this to really define the, like a bowl of the rose or something like that if I wanted to. You know, there's all different kinds of looks that I want. I can really give a nice deep center to the rose if I want, just by dropping that down like that and adding some movement of this color back out like that. So I can define that. If I do that, I might take a little bit of that color and push it in and out of my daisies here just a touch to the cool part of them. And 
my thought process in a, in a good thought process as an artist and working through your design that also adds harmony because even though you have the white daisies now you're picking up that same continuous color that's used in both of them and you have a better harmony and that's one thing you know that's the, the one thing that a, a lot of artists don't think about i mean they just sit there okay i've got a white daisy and i've got a yellow rose and i'm going to paint yellow on my rose and i'm going to put white on my daisy the artist must always think about the harmony of everything going together and when you're going to learn those rules and how you really force yourself into doing that is painting limited palette and painting fast compositions but painting limited palette and this is what i i tell to my students all the time is that you know limited palette painting will teach you color harmonies and because you've got to learn how to change and mix those and then you're going to learn about moving those colors around and you get a much uh, prettier painting uh, because you're using those limited colors, but you're painting harmony more than anything else. That's what really, you know, really works. Well, let's come back in and let's uh, continue working on this thing. Let's brighten up our rows a bit. Okay, so we decided, okay, that looks, that's a nice uh, set start for our rows. Let's brighten up a, a little bit of it uh, into some of the, the light areas where we might want to have a, a little bit more light. So I'll just drop in a little more... Uh, yellow up into there maybe right here where the rose is going to go up, right up over the edge of that um that daisy there we'll brighten that up a, a bit more here okay so we'll see that coming a bit brighter you might even for pure harmony touch a, a bit of that yellow appears into those daisies maybe it appears into the centers of the daisies which we will later on but just start touching a little bit of that color around not too much on the backs of the ones you want to disappear, but, you know, you start touching some of that color around and, and um, you know, move that color. Put that color on there. Move that color. Let's build the front part of our daisy. I'm going to add some, I mean, our rose, because this is going to be the queen. It's going to control everything. So I'm going to um, come over here, pick up some white and my yellow here. And we have to be careful of the white, especially the heritage white is that it, it is very opaque. There's a lot of pigment in it. And so I just want to use a little bit of it right now to start to set the shape. And what I do is I just pick up just a little bit of it. I start the petal down. I curve it into the bowl, start the petal down and curve it into the bowl. Let's um, come across here. Let's draw another little petal in this way here and I might just use my finger to push that one in because all I'm looking for is movement. I don't want to get rid of all the streaks and I don't want to get rid of all of the color that I have there on that rose. I just want to paint for some movement. Now let's soften down just a bit here so I go up here to where my color's a little softer and let's just put in a little soft movement here. Just movement. That's all I'm interested in. I don't need to paint petals or anything. I just need to paint some rounding movement that's going to help assist the rounding feeling here of my the bowl of my rose. Now I want this rose to bend down and open up. So this one I'm kind of, you know, I'm, I'm kind of pulling this way and bending it down and dropping it down like that. And because I want the rose to kind of bend this way. So this bottom side over here, I'm going to open up by pulling the strokes in. So this rose will bend down. And in all the books and in, in other videos and education videos and stuff that I do, I'll show you all the techniques and visually to drawing roses and stuff like that. But basically, you got to think that the, this is a rose, the most juvenile of the petals are into the inside, the smallest ones, the youngest one. Then these are, you know, more teenagers and these are the adults. These will be the larger ones out here. So that's what I'm thinking about as I'm doing that. But, you know, so I know the size of this one that comes out here will be a little bit bigger here. And I'll pull in and out and I'll work that color in and out like that. And, you know, just um, I'll pull here, set that in there like that. That'll be a nice big large petal. I don't need to always paint perfect petals. I just need to give the the viewer the idea that that's a petal by using that light edge out there like that just letting that fade away maybe i'll just do a a bit of the edge here i just need a bit and i like the rose to kind of fade away a little bit as well there and uh, i can 
I can really warm the front of that rose, grab a, a into that Hansa, grab just a touch of that Napsol Red Light. That Napsol Red Light is one of the warmest colors we have on that six color set. So if I really want to bring the warmth up to my whites up here into the front, I'll get just a touch of that Napsol Red Light into that yellow. And that between the light color and the warmth of it, it'll really advance. And then it'll cool right down there, make a nice petal right in the front and cool right down to where we had that red violet there earlier. And that's what that does. So I know I need my red violet because it's cool down there into its shadow. And I need a little bit of that warmth coming right up in here into my light side. Let's drop a petal right here. So you gotta think you got a petal coming this way. You got a petal reaching out. You need a, it, it's like an accordion type thing. It's gotta fold out here. So maybe you have a petal here that's folding out just a bit. And then we'll come right in here like this and we'll just give the edge of, and it could be light or dark. I have some dark on there, you know, already from my sketch. It doesn't need to be perfect light edge, but uh, I can leave it like that. And I just need to have the impression that my my petals are, are folding out and dropping down. And that works there for that one. Maybe I want a soft little edge here. And in these YouTubes, I go pretty quick. I'm sorry, but, you know, there's, um, you know, it's so funny is I want to show them, show them, show. And they always say the average viewing time on a YouTube video is eight minutes. So you got to keep your videos. YouTube always says to me, you got to keep your videos shorter and everything because the average viewing time is eight minutes. And I was just like, well, you know, that's hard for me to do. A, I like to talk a lot. B, I like to show a lot. So that's really difficult. Eight minutes. Well, wow, you really gotta, really gotta paint it up, you know, quite quick. But, you know, it's uh, I can show you some things during our limited time that we have here, and then, uh, you know, if you want some more, you can go. We ask you go over and check our store. Go check our DVDs, and Amazon's now carrying more and more of our videos and stuff. And we also have a channel. We also have an educational channel as well. So now what I'll do is I'll, I'll put some of my light color. I don't want to disturb too much. I've got it up here by my warms. And I want to get some more white into that. I don't want to lose all my yellow. And the other thing is I don't want to lose all my shadow as I get to that bowl in there. So I want to keep that um, in mind as I'm painting this uh, this flower. Now I want to come in here. I don't want to get that too white. So I'm going to slide out here to my more of my toned and softer colors here. And see, just, uh, I can have that nice yellow. I don't want to get rid of all that shadow, so I'll just put some of that on and push in and out the movement, and I'll get a nice petal joining in right there. Now, up here, I can get back more to my light in my light, because this is up by my light source here. So I can get a little bit brighter. We can bring it out a bit here, jagged the edge a bit if we want, and... and uh, so let's redo that. So you can just stick your finger in it and redo it. And that's a nice thing about these are, I had a nice question on one of my videos there. Um, you know, are these, you know, are these paints toxic? No, there's not a toxic thing in these paints at all. As a matter of fact, they're environmentally safe and they're green. So they don't harm the environment at all. So you can stick your fingers in them and paint with them all day long. You know, we have quite a few people use them for all different kinds of painting. And uh, they're they're fine. They're 100% non-toxic. So you don't have to worry about anything in them. And they're environmentally safe. You just clean your brushes right in your sink and wash it on down. They don't hurt the environment either. So we'll pull this this petal a little lighter, a little warmer. You saw me touch just a little bit of the warm color in there. Maybe a touch of the light right onto that one there. I like to put just a few... Got rid of that shadow too much, so I'll push down, which will bring, which will lift off some of the yellow paint that I had there, and reveal some of the shadowing color that I had there from earlier. And I kind of like that uh, sitting like that. Maybe a touch more light. Just see how little bit I have there. A touch more light down into this area will bring these kind of petals. I'm just watching my light now moving around my painting here, this flower. So I want to, uh, I can draw edges of petals, or I can uh, just use a, a small little, get a, you know, a nice little um, thin line or a, a uh, 
little bit of movement into it. That's what I like to do. Just a little bit of movement. Let's draw in and just put that pedal edge in there like that. Push that around like that. So now I've set that thing. Now let's go in and we'll paint down soft down into my uh, my daisy down here. Let's paint that one here. Now you can come in and you can stipple up if you wanted to add like a little bit of movement there in the center of your rose. It's really kind of a false thing that artists do because actually that center is down in here and you wouldn't see it. But uh, if you wanted to put a little bit of your green, that's a great little thing, a little green from your uh, leaves and stuff in there that carries that into the flower. The other thing is if you want your petals to look more transparent, put a little bit of that green right into uh, your petals and stuff in here like this and push in and out like that. And then take just the tiniest little bit of the light color. This is the beauty about this paint. Just the tiniest little bit of the light color. Put your edge back on. Now you have more of a transparent look to your petals. And you can control that. That's why I love this paint. Is It's so heavy pigmented. And you can do that kind of stuff. And one color can sit on top of the other without giving you mud. So many acrylics will give you mud. Now I'll come in and, and I'm going to push in and out a little bit as I paint some of these little daisy petals here just like that and I want this to fade away there so I'm going to I'm going to paint for movement so I'm just going to push this in and out a bit here like this and drag this in and out here take that color in and out and I do this a couple times and you have to can't forget to wipe your finger here too and I use the finger because it gives an unnatural movement of the it's different movement than your brush does so then I Come back and I'll restate my white. Let's grab a little yellow with that just a bit. Turn the brush so it's not always flat. Sometimes use it on its chisel like this and that'll give you a different look to your petals. So we'll turn this, we'll turn a different way. We'll paint the next one here. Round like that, a little different way. Okay. Let's turn this one. Push that in and out. Maybe get just a bit of the edge. Sometimes I'll do daisies, uh, you know, thick petal daisies, thin petal that have just a few petals on them. Uh, I like to paint like this all kinds of different ways. Now I'll come in and let's just put just a bit of the edge here of these petals coming in like this. And that will make these petals look like they're flowing in and out of there. Just a bit of extender if it starts to get a little sticky. If your paints ever start to get sticky, uh, you just feed a little extender. I'm painting underneath the bright lights of the studio here, so it can happen pretty quick, but it, but I have them extended out. So send it out so I have about a three hour drying time on these paints. So see everything here is just all wet and nice. It's just stays wet and nice. So, and it's all how you mix the paint. So we have all of that for you. So I'll pull those in like that. I like that. Let's pull a little more power into that one. Here like that. And in and out. Let's do that again. Here. Here like that. I like sometimes to have those edges on those. Now to the back side of this one I wanted lost and a little softer. So I'm going to drop the, the, the value, the lightness of the color down more towards my brown. And I'll push in and out like that. And let those colors just kind of soften on that particular flower there. So it's not quite so light. We might want to hit a little bit of light right here. Just so that rounds through that that daisy there. Like that. And I like that kind of look where it just kind of dies around like that. Let's take a little bit of that light. And uh, let's turn this one up. So... If I reach out like that, the daisy kind of flattens out and almost like scoops. And depends on if I if I curve the stroke, I can make this whole daisy here. Well, that's a good thing. Just come on your on your background there too. Um, but if I turn that, that'll make the whole daisy look like it scoops. But if I pull down like this, then I'm painting the upward growing petal of the daisy like that. So I've turned the daisy up like that, and then I'll take a softer color here and paint this out and maybe. Drop this down just a bit there. And uh, we'll turn this one out like this. And this is, I think, well, that's got a nice big blob of white there. 
that's super casual. This is so, some of the stuff that a lot of my students will always ask that have the hardest time, uh, you know, turning and and uh, visualizing turning daisies. And I did for the longest time as well. And how I got over it is you paint about 400 of these quick compositions until you learn how to turn daisies and start to see daisies turning and stuff. And that's exactly how you get over it. So I'm going to take just a bit of that light color and just add... Uh, little touches of it back into a few places like there's maybe another little daisy or something else back there just movements of color and that lightens up the design it's not something you do with uh, it's something I can do here with uh, this type of painting it's not something you normally do with a more uh, of a, a botanical type painting or something like that you know so we'll take a little bit of our red and our red violet Let's take a touch of just a tiny touch of black with that. Create kind of a brownish red color. We'll push that into just a, it, it's near the tone, but it's a little more red than than what I have in the center of the rose. So I'll get a little bit of harmony, but it's just a touch different here. But the you you get harmony because the two tones are related to each other. Now I'll take some of my Go back to my black and my Hansa yellow here. Make a nice darker little value of my green, a little bit more black. Let's drop in and let's get back into some of our movement of our stems here and grab some of that um, out. You, there was an artist back in the 90s. I used to watch her on TV all the time, uh, Helen Van Wick, and she painted the most absolutely gorgeous daisies. And she always says, you always bring a straight line out from the daisy. And then before you bread, you band it and stuff. And a lot of those things. I've learned so many things from so many different artists over all the years, and which is what we do. And um, that I always remember. And I'm going to take a little bit of that darker color here. And this is what we call negative painting. It's a technique I use, in, especially in a lot of my rose painting books and stuff that I have. And I have a lot of them. You can just type the links down below. You can see all the different books I have. I have a lot of books that help you with step-by-step -step of, of painting and, and talking about color. I'm a big advocate of color. And um, so I'll, uh, you can use this for negative painting. So if I wanted to bring something out a little bit more, where I have, like right here, i got a real lost edge there. So, you know, maybe I would come in here and I would put in more of a, a leaf shape or even just the greens of the leaf. I don't even need to be perfect with the with the um, the leaf itself there yet. And I can use the dark here though to paint out some of the light and really refine the bottom edge of that daisy. Or if I want to really pop off this little edge right here, clean it up and go from this kind of lost edge to more of a found edge, I come in like that. You don't need very much. Just like the you know, it's it's like what our porcelain painters say. You don't need very much there. See how that advances that whole daisy there. So I can do it positively here with, say, a real light color, white, and, and bring this daisy petal up like that. And you can see that daisy petal there fine up against the edge. Or I can do it negatively by doing it with some of the background. And, you know, I like to do both. Now, that's all very nice and light there. We could get a lighter green. We could also add just a, that little bit of thalo blue that's in the six color set there. Change that green up. Get it just a little bit more of a green green color. And we can add some of that up, especially up in here through the center. So we're not, and it'll contrast our background. It'll get a little more interest going on in our greens in the center of our composition. Um, just because that gives just a, you know, a, it's a, it's not quite as warm as our background is. And so we're using a cool color here to create some contrast, some contrast into our leaves, some of our colors. I can take that color out here a little bit, just kind of sprinkle it around. Maybe right in here, if I really want to make this painting what we call formal, this is a formal where the two sits together. The two of them sit together. I can come in here and give the idea that there's another daisy or so sitting right back in there. And a little bit of movement. That's all it needs is a little bit of movement, a little bit of stuff going on there. We'll cover this up with that leaf. But maybe there's a back daisy back there. 
and we'll just push some movement in and out. We don't need very much. Maybe a bit of our reds and stuff back in there. A bit of darker color. Just a suggestion of it. This is how I, I like to build designs. I like to, especially when I'm painting quick compositions like this and building stuff. And, you know, not everything has to be uh, drawn out. You can add to it and you read it as you're painting it. What does it need? Rather than having a hole there with just leaves, okay, let's put a flower in there. But we don't have to have the flower up into the the same height. We can push it back a little bit further into the, the into the painting, put it back behind something, and it'll sit nice. Let's take a nice light green here, and let's just push that light green edge here. That's just a little too much white on the edge of that. And push a light green through there. Maybe a bit of our darker green. So I take a little blue, a little, a little bit of blue, a little bit of the, uh, and I'm watching the green, a little bit of blue and the Hansi yellow and some of that black. And let's just take a, get a little bit more of that green going into there. So I get a lot of stuff going, going on in here. And that's what I want, especially in my center of interest. You got to watch it up against your rose. I don't want to, you know, she's the queen there. She takes over everything. That's her job. She is, everyone wants to see the queen first. So I got to be careful that I don't do so much to, to interfere with uh, her dominating the painting. But some of these other colors in here will work really nice. It's just movement. And I like to, you do that. And you'll find a lot of uh, botanical and stuff, painters and stuff will just push together colors and movement like this and not really paint as much as a flower shape they just kind of push some stuff together and that works really well so we'll drop some of that in i'll need to lighten that up just a little bit more but i need to take that color out into a few other little areas i'm a big advocate if you make a color you got to move it around you got to move that color around because it's it uh, shouldn't appear just in one one particular area. Now, one of the things we want to do is start to also, before I, I'll let that tack for just a second, but let's take some of our yellow, maybe some of our yellow or red here, and we'll start to put a little bit of our yellow in for the centers of our daisies. Yellow with just model right into my reds here. Model means that I, I touch the colors together, but I don't mix them. So I'll just tap them together like this a little bit there, but I won't mix them up too much. So as I touch my brush, so now I've got more Hansa. As I touch my brush, some different colors will come out here as I'm doing that. And then I'll touch that with my finger to kind of soften those tones together there like that. There like that. And we'll push that in and around. So this is the... The six color set. I'm just painting it with the six colors, and and uh, they're really a lot of fun to use in a composition like this. And I have others that you know they sent everyone you know sends me photos and some of the stuff that they do, and you know you can tell that they're you you know you're using a lower grade acrylic and stuff because you don't get that. Look at the clarity of the colors that you have. This is an artist grade color that you and this is and it's for doing art it's for you know painting this way and working these colors and the tone so you don't lose the tone when you're running one color into another or something like that you know um i'm going to take just a bit of that and add just a little here and there just little whispers of that tone so that those all go together see the harmony that that brings all of a sudden by just whispering just a little bit of that green right there and uh let's set that in a little bit of that green, a little bit of that yellow. Boy, I'm a colorist. A little bit of that yellow right in there like that. And you can see how that just takes the harmony. See how it carries that right on down there like that. And uh, so let's come back here and fix up this little daisy there. We'll drop it down here a bit more. There. That one right in there. And... Uh, Put this up here, a little lighter there, coming out that way. 
that's good this one will turn down here that way so that makes the daisy look like it's turning and rotating down here like that there we go now we'll put the final little green light greens yellow greens here let's just scoop up some of that color push that light green into this leaf that's right up here by the top front of that daisy there let's put a bit of that right up in here into some of this so they see some of that green coming up there maybe a bit of that green coming down to the front you can even put some of that into your stem there i got you gotta watch it there's because sometimes after painting and painting your stems can get lost and you might need to come back just take a nice dirty brownish color here and restate them a couple times here get some of that nice movement in and through uh, your little painting then I'll take uh, some of that dark let's add that right in there just an extra little uh, carries the color right you carry that color carries that color into that daisy in there and uh, it's a nice I, I see I like that really like that boom contrast right there so we'll just add a touch of that especially like it when it heads to that little bit of red violet that's nice boom dark color there and uh, that kind of sets that all up like that okay there you go there's a quick uh, little composition done on more of a dry background this time sketching it in working the six color set and like I said you know all the links are down below there okay and if you like our channel please do us the favor of subscribing because when you subscribe to a channel not only do you get notified if you, you sign up for the, the, the notifications of it not only do you get notified when we add new material to our channel um, but uh, you help us a tremendous amount because the more subscribers we get, the more YouTube puts our videos out a little bit further and it makes us more successful so we can do more of this for you. Okay, thanks very much. We really, really appreciate it. And like I always say there, you can make a comment and stuff that's uh, down below. You can ask some questions and I can't always get to them immediately. I try to get to them, you know, at least once a week or so. But uh, you can always write to us at our studio. Visit the links down below and you can go see us on our store, our online store. And, you know, and uh, you can also buy all of our stuff there on Amazon. Okay, thanks very much for joining me and I'll look forward to seeing you on some of the other videos. Okay, take care. Bye-bye.